So in Psalm 139, David says, You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from a far way off. Do you discern my going out and my lying down? You are my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Somebody was asking me the other day, too. They, were, they kind of gave me the impression they thought God made us and then he didn't have to worry about us anymore. But this tells us he even knows our thoughts. And he knows our going out and our coming in. Another place of the Bible says he knows how many hairs we have on our heads. So if somebody knows us that well, he really knows us very, very well, doesn't he? He knows what we're thinking right now. He knows what we're going to be doing in 20 years, in 30 years. Okay? But you know what? It didn't start just today. It started when we were created in our mother's bodies. Because it says, you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. And you know what? With our Creative Arts and Sciences Fair, we even know that even more because of the investigations you guys did, because of the things that you created, because of the thoughts and the inspiration that went into what you made. You are investigating more about God's world so that we can know him full well, and he knows us full well, and we can know him even better. You know, we're not going to be able to know him completely until we're there with him. But little by little, we're learning, aren't we? So we're going to go ahead and celebrate each other's accomplishments today with our Creative Arts and Sciences Fair. We are going to start with kindergarten. So kindergarten, we want to, let's first of all, Honor those that are the finalists, Karis Wallace, Tessa Magalaga, Nihiel Joseph, and our honorable... Okay, yes, give a round of applause. And then we have honorable mentions, Curtis and Asher. So come on up, and let's go ahead, and you can... Um, kindergarten teacher, come on up with them, and we can escort them up to the steps with their projects, and they can show us... I would like first grade to go ahead and line up. Just the, the finalists can line up right here to be ready in the wings and waiting. Oops, sorry. Hmm? Oh, okay, for them on stage. Mrs. Musa? Well, we already did. Whoops, I'm sorry, Asha. Okay, so Karis, Karis, why don't you go ahead up to the table there? Would you like to say something before we show your video, or do you want to show your video first? Would you like to say something before the video? Good morning, everybody. My name is Karis, and the title of my project is The Life Cycle of a Butterfly. And the title of my um, project is The Life Cycle of a Butterfly. I wanted to show you my... I wanted to do it because um, I wanted to show how I um, learned how to sew with my grandma. This is the four stages of the life cycle of the butterfly. First, the butterfly lays an egg on a leaf. And then... Um, in there grows a little caterpillar or a larva. And then it munches his way through the egg. Then it starts eating all the leaves close by. And then it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. 
And then the caterpillar hides on the leaf and then it wraps his, his, himself in some silk thread for two, two to five, four weeks. It stays in its cocoon and then out comes a butterfly. Good morning, everyone. My name is Tessem Agarega, and my project is a simple microscope. And I use the cup, cut the bottom off, and and put rubber band and put tape and and I put water on the top then Good morning, everyone. My name is Michael, and and I made a bead and a necklace. I put a brown one and a white one and and I put a brown one and a white one and for the other one I put a brown and a and a white one Right, we're done. Thank you. So we have Oriolua, Zanaria, and Celine. Good morning, 
everybody. My name is Aurel Lua, and my project title is My Pink Plate. I made my pink plate out of cutting newspapers, cutting newspapers, and I soaked the newspapers in water, and after that, I put it in starch water and put it in a mold. Then I waited for four days to, for it to dry. And I removed the plate from the... This is the, the second plate I made. I painted it pink because I like the color pink. This plate, I, I made it different colors because I, because I like the rainbow. And this plate, I like it because it like this plate. I like this plate because it's very shiny. Very good, thank you, Ori. All righty, Zanaria, you're up next. Zanaria has a video. Do you want to say something first? You want to say something first? Oh, okay. This morning, I'll wait for you. Okay, yes, you. Uh, thank you for today. Thank you for Hannah. Thank you. I pray that you heal her and she gets better immediately. And we believe that you can help her and you can heal her body in Jesus. Amen. So, I'll come to your house on Saturday and I wanted to ask you what's your favorite food. Padana. Okay. I'll bring it for you on my way. Thank you. Hi, your present. How are you, CDs? They are fine. Thank you. I'm already feeling better. Okay. I'll come to your house on Saturday. I'll ask my parents. Right. 
Zanaria is going to let the video speak for itself, she says. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. My name is Selim Basma, and I am in grade one. My science fair project is called the Bubble Stick Blower, and let's watch the video together. Selim Basma, and I am in grade one, and and my science fair project is called the a bubble stick blower and uh, today I'm going to show you how you make one at your home. To make a bubble stick blower we need color straws and we need uh, scissors, we need dish soap and we need glue gun. Now we have to cut the, the straws into these small pieces and now we glue four pieces and then three pieces and then two pieces and then one piece. And we glue the three on top the four and then we glue the two on top the three and then we glue the one on top the two on both sides. After gluing the parts we are we are going to have this shape. We need six colors of this shape. Then we 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 glue the, the six parts like this and then we glue a long straw in the middle. Now it's time to try our project. It works. Hope you give it a try. Bye! So are you going to try it? Are you going to try it right now? Okay. I think she's going to try it right now. It works, doesn't it? Good job. Well done. So in grade one, all by itself, we have a scientist and a, an actress and a craftsman. Well done. Let's see what second grade has here. So second graders, we have Siseng Bat, Davian Kanu, Maman Tamtambe, and the Yaba. Our honorable mentions are Chiedu and Joshua. We do need a little bit, just this, I'm just going to use Good morning all, my name is Sisang and I made a pop-up book. Why I made a pop-up book is I like to read and draw. The title of my story is Jesus' Gifts. I love to receive gifts. Jesus loved to receive gifts too. 
He got his first gift of a bed from the animals, their manger. I wonder if Jesus could sleep. Wise men came with their gift of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. From Egypt came the gift of safety from King Herod. I wonder if Jesus swam in the river like Moses. Even a little boy gave him his lunch, five loaves of bread and two small fish. The fish was not left out. It gave Jesus a coin to pay his tax. That fish must have been rich. A woman gave Jesus an alabaster jar of sweet-smelling oil and poured it down his feet. So what can I give what can I give Jesus? I will give him my heart. Very nice. I googled some pictures on the computer and I drew them. Some my mom helped me and some I did them. And how I made the paper was I folded one part and then I now folded the other side and then I now opened it and I now made it pop up and then I now, and then I now stuck my animal my pictures to it. Thank you. Very nice. Well done. Okay, now we have Davion. Life is so beautiful So many days and so many nights I've laughed and I've cried Your smile is so beautiful So many days and so many nights you stood by my side And we'll be dancing along to the music, the music we made And we'll be singing along to the songs, the songs that we wrote They'll say, oh, 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 I'm still standing. No, oh, 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 I'm still standing. Life is so wonderful. Songs that we wrote And 
yourself say oh 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 I'm still standing no oh Dancing along to the music, the music we make And we'll be singing along to the songs, the songs that we wrote And they'll say, oh, 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 I'm still standing no, oh, 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 I'm still standing. everyone my name is Davian I'm here to present my creative art and science project titled our peace building process the RDB hammer project was inspired by the ongoing war between Israel and Palestine and its effect on all that God has made using paper I saw a lot of children who were injured and couldn't go to school but our children like me and those on the other side we all do have long and safe place to stay Israel and Palestine, let's put our differences, our fight and our fears aside, and build a world where peace will stand. The, mat the materials that I used are strawboard, FAB paper, origami paper, rusty glue, sharpies, pencil, a pair of scissors, cut wool, and improvised flagpole. I set out by creating a platform using the strawboard. I got paper into the letters and glued them to make three dimensional letters of the word peace. I drew and colored little men to support the peace building process so the alphabet won't fall apart. I start closer to the base of my letters. I got colored origami paper to create flag representing Israel and Palestine. In conclusion, we must to have 18 cities, if it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. A God, God of excellence, I pray the Lord will make us instruments of peace to the world. Thank you. Good morning, elementary parents and teachers. Please, who can tell us the theme of the school year? I will. <laughs> the theme of the school year is Faithful, which is my art and science project. And the category of this project is art and dance. My name is Mam Tam Tambe Andeaba. So what does it mean that God is faithful? It means he is completely trustworthy. Isn't God faithful to the whole world? Of course he is. God is ever faithful. Hmm. 
because mommy always reminds me of God's provision for my school fees. I'm sure every parent here knows what that means. I would like to use the word of God from 2 Thessalonians 3 verse 3 and dance to a song. But the Lord is faithful and he will strengthen you and protect you from the evil. summer break. Thank you for listening and watching. All righty, let's give it up one more time for second grade.
Grade three, our little owls. You can see the finalists on the top. Dumebe with beadwork, Jeffrey soothing ukulele, Sophia a pencil holder, and the honorable, honorable mentions, Minu, Salem, and Buehamasi. <laughs> Good morning, parents, teachers, and elementary. My name is Dumebi Okafo. I'm here to present my project titled Beadcraft. I got inspired to work with beads when I visited a bead shop with my mom. There were lots and lots of beads. I was told that I could make many things with them, so I decided to make one. It took me about two weeks to make this bag, and the materials I used to make it are one, beads which were bought from the market. Two, rope. I got someone to help me, and I also got help from my mom. It took me about two weeks to make this bag. This bag can hold many things, like money, candy, and lip gloss. If you need one, you can let me know. Thank you very much. These are the beads remaining from the bag I made. And I started to make another one. Thank you. Good morning, judges, parents, teachers, and students. My name is Jeffrey Eguda, and I will be playing songs on my ukulele, sounds on my ukulele. I, I created this by myself. Enjoy. for listening. Well done. Well done. Good morning. Good morning, parents, teachers, students, 
sound group and those online. My name is Sophia Nasruddin and I'm here to present my project. For my project, I decided to make something that I need. This is how I made it. I decided to make a pencil holder from using recycled milk cartons. I cut, I cut them in half and used a ruler to shape them the way I wanted them. I then glued them together with help of an adult using a hot glue gun. I then used, I then used, uh, I then used, I then made a ha the handle by using two leftover cloths and, rolled and rolling and sticking them together. The next part was my favorite part, the messy part, painting. I used the color yellow and pink and purple, but for some reason, the, the pink and purple looks like blue and white. I then rolled up two pieces of foil and two pieces of paper. I scrunched them up to form a ball. I then stuck one of each on each side of my pencil holder. Finally, I glued on four legs at the bottom of my pencil holder using mil milk carton caps. I waited patiently for the milk carton caps. I then asked my mom to help me help stick the caps with the hot glue gun on the bottom. And this is the result. That was a practical, a practical part. All right, very good, thank you. All right, let's give it up for third grade. Okay, fourth graders, come and line up, please. Class of 3032 finalists were Hailana, Eri, and Idumafa. Come on up. Hailana, you, know, you won't need to bring your project, but the rest of you bring your projects. Just come on up. Let's wait till everybody comes. All right, so hello, Anna. You just tell them that they'll need to come to see it. Find out where it is. And then explain it. Find out where it is. And they'll come to see it. Okay. I've got some pictures. Okay. Go ahead. Good morning, everyone. My name is Helena Jank, and I would like to present my Scrap Town. As a project in the arts category, I long to express that God's creation is amazing in so many ways. It reminds me of when God first made the world. For my project, I used cardboard boxes, toy food, toy clothes, and some other stuff like beads and Legos. I started by cutting out boxes and looking around places for other boxes that could help me out. I didn't have any help except for a tiny bit of help from my friends Emily Harmson and Annabeth. And I added the, the t details last week. That's all. over there. Hailana wants you to know that the rest of her project is there by the door. We couldn't bring it all up here, but that's by the door, so please make sure that you stop by to see Scrap Town. Our next presenter is Idumafa. Good morning, parents. Good morning, teachers. Good morning, everybody. My name is Idumafa Amupiton, and I'm. And the category my project is in is music and art. So the idea I wanted to express is that we don't have to throw our trash away; that we can recycle it and make it into more useful things. In Genesis chapter one, verse eleven. When God made the earth, He said it was good, so we should keep it good. And in John chapter six, verse one, after Jesus fed the five thousand, five thousand, He told His disciples to pick every fragment so that nothing may be wasted. The things I used were a flat board, caps, paper, 
and construction paper and glue. I I didn't really get too much help except from my from my brother and my dad. So I, I first I gathered all the caps. And I, then I now put them in a colorful design. Then I now glued everything. I wrote Save Nigeria and I put a recycle sign to show that we should always recycle. And it's not only caps we, we can recycle. We can also recycle other things like bottles, cardboard, and can. Thank you. Good morning, uh, elementary. Good morning, parents. And good morning, sound group. For my creative arts and science fair projects, I made three tie-dye shirts. And I mixed it together and I'm going to apply it to the shirt. So let me just explain what I'm going to do. So I'm going to put a um, jig all over this side and at the back it's just around, not the inside. So let's get started. So I'm going to pinch it and do it all over again. So I turned it anti-clockwise. Now I'm going to just do only the middle, not the whole thing. Um, I am um, outlining it so I can put the wax on it. I'm going to melt the wax and it's still on the fire before I put it on the shirt. So now I'm going to apply the wax very carefully. So I applied my shirt and I'm going to dye it and my pattern is going to be pink, orange, green, neon, yellow. So I'm going to get my color. So the instructions of the dye said I should shake it. So I'm going to shake it.
This is how all of them turned out. This is how the black one turned out. The heart represents how God loves us. This is how the second one turned out. The cross represents how God died on the cross for our sins. And the second one, I, the third one I did for fun. Alongside my tie-dye shirt, I made a lumba I made loom bands and recently I started a business called Looms and it's and I'm going to show you some examples. Thank you for listening. All righty, let's go ahead and clap for the all of fourth grade. Fifth graders, are you ready? For fifth grade, we have three finalists and a bunch of honorable mentions. Salah Basma, Tahir Bawa, Great Light Anoja, and Aloche Aduku. The honorable mentions, Nia, Daniel, Manji, Jeremy, and Jordan. Good morning, parents, teachers, and elementary. My name is Salah Basma, and the title of my creative arts and science fair project is the, Anem the Anemometer. I did some extra research about the Anemometer and found some interesting facts I'd like to share with you. It was invented by Leon Battista Alberti. It was invented in 1450. It was invented in Arme Observatory in Northern Ireland. Its purpose is to measure wind speed and pressure. It got its name from the Greek word animos, meaning wind. And it is mostly used in airports and weather stations. I have a small video of the one in Yakubu Gawonjo's airport, I'd like to share with you. While that's loading, this anemometer I have here is just a model, and it doesn't actually record wind speed and pressure. Okay, okay, okay. The materials I used to make this was 
were one container to serve as a base, a skewer, a glue gun, five cups, two straws, a perforator, and a pin. I made it by first filling the container with sand to have weight. I then passed the skewer through the container and glued it down. I then perforated one cup on four sides and passed two straws through that cup. I then glued the remaining four cups on the ends of each of the straws and passed a pin through it to, and attached it to the skewer, which enables it to spin. I would now demonstrate. Thank you, for, oops. Thank you for listening to my presentation. The video. In the late 1500s, two Dutch spectacle makers named Hans and Zachariah Jelsen created the first microscope, or as I like to call it, a Faber and Son duo. But little did they know that Robert Hooke would modify their invention. And even after Robert Hooke, a thousand more people will keep on modifying the microscope. One day, I hope I'll fall into that category. Good morning. Good morning, elementary. Good morning, parents. Good morning, teachers. My name is Taisha Bauer, and the title of my presentation is called the DIY Microscope. The, the idea I wanted to express is how scientists are able to see living organisms that are not visible to the naked eye. My materials were um, a cake stand, Three tissue rolls, cardboard, a hot glue gun, a phone box, a laser, scissors, and a leaf. The process for the lens was first, I got three tissue rolls and I wrapped them up in wrapping paper. Then I glued the objective lens and the eyepiece on both sides. Um, the procedure for the body was, I got some cardboard, I cut it into the shape I wanted. Then I glued it to the cake stand. I got an old phone box and I glued it there. Made a hole with the scissors and stuck my laser in it. Then I glued the roll to the body and this is the result. The great... Just as William James C.D. said, the greatest use of life is to outlast it. And that's why God made us creative beings. But before I leave the stage, I would like to leave you with the words Einstein once said. Education is not the learning of facts, but the training of the mind to think. Thank you. Good morning, parents, teachers, and elementary school. My name is Grilla Tonoja, and the title of my project is Applying Pressure to a Bleeding Injury.
The question I wanted to answer is why do you have to apply pressure to a bleeding injury? I did this project because whenever I injure myself, my guardian always says I should apply pressure to the injury. First, what is bleeding? Bleeding is the loss of blood from the circulatory system. There are three main types of bleeding and they are the arterial bleeding, which occurs in the arteries. Then we have the venous bleeding, which takes place in the veins. And finally, we have the capillary bleeding, which takes place in the capillaries. Now, why do we have to stop bleeding? We have to stop bleeding because too much bleeding can make your body go into a shock. I'll be presenting a partial model of the circulatory system to show how applying pressure stops bleeding. Materials were used were a bottle, pa tubes, white paper, and hard cardboard. To make this, I first I first connected the tubes, then I made a big hole in the bottle cap to put one end of the tubes there, and then I used a, a blockage from a kit that my mom bought, and I put blue paint to represent the venari venous blood. Now, if I apply pressure here, it stops the bleeding. In conclusion, I have realized why you need to apply pressure to stop bleeding. You need to apply pressure to stop bleeding because pressure slows the flow of blood at the site of the bleeding injury. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. The title of my presentation is How to Make Your Table Attractive. Is your table attractive and inviting? God has called us to a banquet, and a banquet in the presence of our enemies. And when you think of a banquet, what comes to mind first? Food. When you think of food, you don't expect the food to be served on a bare table like this. You expect it to be served on something like this. You expect the table to be put set with a tablecloth, you see flowers, and you see napkins. Today I'm specializing on the napkins and I'm going to teach you three different ways of folding a napkin. The first is what I call an octopus bird. You take your square-shaped napkin and fold it into a triangle. After you have your triangle, you take one edge of it and you fold it into the middle. You do the same to the other edge. For the third edge, you bring it down to meet the other two edges. Then you fold it down. I mean, you turn it upside down. Then you take one edge and fold it towards the middle and you do the same to the other edge. Make sure your bottom edges are sticking out. 
then turn it upside down and you have something that has a beak like a bird and it has wings like a bird like this I called it, I added an octopus because it has eight sides like an octopus has eight legs. That is why I call it the octopus bird. The second is the three diagonal folds. Take your square shaped napkin and fold it into a rectangle. You fold it again into a square. Make sure that the open edges are facing the top right corner. You take one edge and fold it down. You take the second edge and tuck it under the third the second and you take the third edge and tuck it under the second then you turn it upside down you take one edge and fold it in you take another edge and fold it in when you turn it you should have three pockets one for your spoon one for your fork and one for your knife my last one is a flat plane pocket you take your square shaped napkin and you fold it into a rectangle. You take one edge and you fold it down. You turn it upside down. Then you take one corner and bring it towards the middle and you do the same to the second edge. You then take one of the bottom edges and you fold it down. You do the same to the other edge. You bring your knife and you put it in. Then you bring your fork and you put it in. You should put your cutlery facing down because you don't want the part you put in your mouth to gain food. I would invite two of you here, but there's no food for you to eat. These are the three napkin folds I'm going to t I've taught you today. I hope you have learned something. All righty, let's give fifth grader another round of applause for their creativity. Well done. Can you go back to your seats? All righty, everybody can go back to their seats. Okay, so it is, we have gone a whole hour already. You guys have been great watching your classmates, watching your fellow students here at Hillcrest. We have some really talented people that we are finding, we are finding things out about each other we didn't even know we knew. That's what I really like about the, um, this fair because things come out that we don't normally see. But we have a big announcement to make. It is beginning to look a lot like Christmas. We have had a partnership with an organization called Jebu Miango Reads. They have changed their name to Claire Aid Foundation. We're going to partner up again with them this year. 
And um, so that's why I circled in the top that JMR is what we have on shirts that we wore one year for our Christmas, um, our Christmas fundraiser that we have every year. We know we, we want to raise funds to be able to be able to um, give a gift to a group of children or for an organization that aren't fortunate enough to have the things that we have. So this organization has a special Christmas party that they're going to be putting together, and I'd like to show you a video about last year's party. I don't know about you, but I can definitely smell Christmas in the air. You know what else is around the corner? What? What? Merry Christmas! Yes! Eclair Christmas 2023 is coming! Last year, we reached out to about 1,800 children from five different communities. And as always, it was a hit. And this year, it will be bigger and better. Are you wondering how you can be part of this to make this Christmas special and memorable for other children? Come closer. Ah, ah, why are you whispering? Please ring the bells and sound the alarm. One way you can be a part of this is by volunteering. We are always excited about making new friends and there is room for everyone. Do you know how to make hair, bab, cook, play, wash, or just smile and give out work? Come, there is definitely room for you. Use the link in the caption to fill the volunteer form. And please donate. Your kind and generous gifts make it possible for the children to have an amazing experience. It was the success of this project. The account details are on your screen. Still speaking on gifts, you can also donate in kind. You have clothes, shoes, food items, and snacks. Feel free. Send them to us. And please pray with us. Only God can make this a reality. So what do you say, guys? Let's do something amazing this December. We can't wait to have you! All right, I can hear that you're in the Christmas spirit already. So we're going to help by giving some, by helping them by gifting them in kind. So that means we're not going to send money this year, but we are all going to have, uh, each class is going to collect items to make into hygiene kits to be able to add to their Christmas goodies so they can give 2,000, not 1,800, but 2,000, maybe 2,200 or 2,500 kids these hygiene kits. So let me show you a picture about, with, about, of one here. So we're going to join our hands with Claire Aid Foundation for Peers in Rural Areas. I think there was a picture. All right, here we go. So this is the hygiene kit that they have asked us to help put together for them. So it is a bath sponge, a toothbrush, toothpaste, bar of soap, and a container of petroleum jelly, Vaseline, okay? And all of it needs to fit into one of those small thank you bags that I'm sure you're all familiar with. So we're not gonna get ginormous pieces, but we're gonna get enough to put into those bags. So each class is going to be collecting one of those items. So I'm gonna let your teacher announce to you in your class what items you're gonna collect. And we wanna collect enough to give 2,000 bags out at their Christmas program. Who thinks we can do that? I think we can do that. I think we can do that. So, sponge, toothbrush, toothpaste, soap, the Vaseline, petroleum jelly, all to fit in a small bag. All righty, so let's go ahead and close our chapel with a word of prayer, and then your teachers will announce to you later on today, because we have two weekends. We've got this weekend and next weekend to gather things together on December 1st is our half day that we'll be using to put these Christmas hygiene kits together. We're going to be making some Christmas cards for each of the kiddos and then putting them in a bag as well. 
Alrighty, so let's go ahead and pray, and I will dismiss you, and um, teachers, use your discretion about, about um, some time. Oh, well, we are, it's right at 10 o'clock, so we'll be all just dismissing right to the playground. In Jesus' name. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you for this time together. Thank you for the talents and the gifts that you have given us. Thank you for helping our nerves to stay calm. Thank you for the chance to be able to express ourselves and to be able to glorify your name and the things that you have given us to be able to, to do, that you've given us our time, you've given us our talents, you've given us our creativity, you've given us inspiration. We pray that you would also guide us the rest of the today, that Friday would go well, and also bless us over the weekend. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. All right. You Whoops. Thank you again, parents, for coming and joining us. We appreciate it very much.